Louder! And it's time for the Gore and More Podcast. Gonna have a good time. Gonna have a good time. Yeah, we're gonna have a good time. We're going on now. A ball break, ball walking break. in and head in the moonlight. The moonlight. We'll be the sweet soul there. I swear, we'll never part. Going on a ball break, ball running break. in the sand, feeling all right. And what's going on, Gorehounds? Welcome back to the Gore More Podcast. I am your not so mean fluff master supreme, Big Johnny D, bringing this shit show in. However, I don't bring this shit show in alone. We're with me as always. <laughs> oh, don't pay attention to that. <laughs> I'm testing. Like we're not supposed to pay attention to the word testicles. Come on. on the screen. One, Anything that involves two, balls. Technically, that's like, that's like testicles. I'm not yeah, really sure. What uh, like Listen, test- whatever, test- word form, whatever word form it comes in, we have to look at it. It's All true. right. Uh, welcome to the shit show, everybody. I'm your fluff master supreme, Big Johnny D. Bring it in, but like once again, can't bring this shit show alone because for with me as always are my beloved horror brethren. Going around the room, we are starting off with that Dark Lord of Knowledge, that Chad Daddy, all the way down from the Chattahoochee, Mr. Chad Christmas. What's up, bitches? We have the Duke of the Dead, the Dean of the Deceased, Lord Scuba Cabra, Mr. Steve Vasquez. How's it going, <laughs> motherfuckers? <laughs> We have coming in for our guest spot today, and welcome, welcome. We have Just Gene. Just Gene. Hello, guys. I want to, co- you know what? I was trying to think of like a good nickname for you, homie, before the thing, and I was almost like, do I go just Gene Hackman? Just because it's too easy. Oh, mean Gene do Hackman. I go, or Hack and Slash, Gene Hack and Slash. I don't know, but I like, I like Jesus Gene myself. Jesus, Jesus Gene. Gene. <laughs> Not so mean, Jesus Gene. I don't want to get struck down mid podcast. I don't know if I'm going to be. The thing is, Jesus Christ. It just looks like Jesus. Fair enough. So awesome. Does, well, the uh, whitewashed Jesus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? I want fro <laughs> out Jesus, dude. Like, Come on, ever, well, it's Jesus. Oh, what's up, Ben? What's you know, Jesus, I, Steve? Bro, I want. I want I want a Hispanic Jesus that turns water into sangria. Ooh. There you go. Uh, bro, bro, and right. the little Christ checks every Sunday is just a fucking actual tortilla. Sign me oh, What the fuck? Go. Come on, let's, church go. A lot more. let's fucking <laughs> go. It's a tiny <laughs> street taco. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. It's down, like, down. The meat and everything on it. It's, it's just a little, it's a little quesadilla or tostada or something it's different every week all right I, I'm, conver- I'm converting life. i'm converting to hispanic jesus <laughs> yeah. before we get too far <laughs> off topic let me finish this up and we got also the killing machine himself that meat mountain mr Bobby amone good evening fuck <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that random cycle <laughs> like you said, but not said in the chat not- right now tortilla with melted butter it's just a little mini tortilla with some melted Steve. butter Bro, exactly. A little bit of salt. Mind you a don't need salt. anything else. You don't May the need carnitas bring me the everlasting life, please. <laughs> uh, what does Ben say? Mexican Jesus turns water into four logo. Jesus Christ. And on no. Easter's wait, oh, he turned wait, it into tequila. Are we doing like pre 2000s four loco? What are we talking? Or <laughs> original four loco. It's yeah. Mexican Jesus. It's got to be original four yeah. loco. Fair enough. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, boys, I saw earlier in the chat. I'll just straight up ask: Are we doing slice of life today? What do we want to do? I, I mean, we didn't do it last week, and we still ran at two hours. So, so yeah, but that was, guys. that was that was Friday the thirteenth. There was there was like seven Friday of it though, too. So it was sure, sorry, that was a packed house. I don't care. I mean, we keep it short, and sweet. That's fine with me. If you guys want, if Please not, let's do it real quick. Yeah, just all right. Just short and sweet. And for the first time in twenty. 20- 24, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is now time for your slice of life. Thank you, buddy. We can't get, you know, this we can't get the this is right. actually the first slice of life we've done in like three weeks. Uh, well, yeah, because Christmas, chaotic oh, yeah. Christmas episode, yeah. which, by the way, all the episodes are up to date on all the streams and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, even Ooh. if you want to listen to Chaotic Christmas, I wasn't sure if I was even going to make that one just a listenable episode. And I was like, fuck it, dude, why not? It was a fun episode. So that one's technically, because I didn't know, I didn't want to fuck up our number system here. That's 272.5. I'm not not going to do it. Why did you ask? Brody, I could have made that happen today for myself. 
maybe <laughs> next Monday. <laughs> All right. Um, Chad, Daddy, how was you? How you been, homie? I'm not too bad. You know, we just got through the holidays and everything, and then uh, this past week, you know, back to work as usual. I mean, I didn't really take much time off for work. I didn't have that option. Maybe you know, still work. Um, yeah, not much has been going on. Just been playing my new game. I've been playing Midnight Suns on the PS5, which is actually pretty fuck. What the? F- <laughs> Don't worry about what I'm doing. Scoobs is playing with the Gordon Moore logo in the corner. Oh, yeah, yeah. I get it. Oh, uh, shit. You look- once again. Whatever. You know what, man? I'm just happy that every it looks like everybody's, like, the chats and everything were working today. Yeah, it looks good. Ha, I mean, English cross, yeah. Had technical yeah. issues last year. But, yeah, not much has been going on here. Um, my son's been sick the last uh, few days. He finally felt better today. We sent him back to school. The wife wasn't feeling good over the weekend. Um, we were supposed to get, like, a really bad snowstorm over the weekend. Didn't happen. We got two inches. Really? So I thought, dude, not, we literally, like, our business was getting fucked over because truckers weren't showing up last Friday because they were all scared to drive through fucking Pennsylvania because of how bad it was supposed to fucking hit. Damn. Did any of, I mean, we got hit pretty bad. Did any of PA get fucking? Mad? It was more east. It was more east. No. Was New Jersey. Like, nah, New Jersey didn't, well, my neck of the woods, we didn't get shit. Say, I got a follow, I got a solid fucking like 10 inches where we're at, dude. So I was just like, so does Bobby. I want the 10. <laughs> but um, you're off the 11 10. inches that I have. I, but that's any, that's any, I wasn't counting the foreskin. Around. Bobby, Chad, that's not foreskin, baby. That's just before. all, that's just all there. <laughs> just, so, continue. Okay, so Gene, Gene mentioned something. I got to bring this up back when we were, oh God, we were in like our early fucking 20s. And we used to hang out at the local movie theater. And Gene used to ride a skateboard outside around. And these girls would walk by. And he'd look at these girls. He'd go, you know, I got a 12-inch penis around. <laughs> <laughs> American Pie but did it. He did it first. Gene did it first. And then we heard nice. American Pie. And he was so pissed. You remember that? <laughs> That'll That's happen. What it is. Like fucking American Pie they stole, stole it. My, they where? stole my joke. So I just want to say, Ben, you're full of shit. I did get you something. I just forgot to give it to you. It's sitting on my dresser still, so eat a fat 10-inch round. I feel like I remember you saying you got something, but he said... I did. I said said it. He lives right down the road, right down around the corner, so his ass can come get it. I did say that. Yes, he always makes people get shit. Ah, See, it goes both ways. Because he said something in the chat first. And honestly, the fact that even I remember that is saying something. So... (laughs) Yeah, Ben. Yeah, Ben. Uh, over. So yeah, to keep it short and sweet, not much is new here. Uh, haven't watched any new movies lately for a while, so uh, let's kick it over to Ski- Scoob Steve. The only thing new with me is I started my new job today. I didn't post hey. about it on Facebook, though, but I did start my new job today, and today it was pretty pretty boring. They handed me a stack of papers, literally about that big, and it oh. was all just work stuff to fill out so that's what i did all day they did let me leave early today which was great so instead of getting out at five i got off at four came home took a nap and now i'm here gene oh shit what did i do this week uh so i'm a football not like mm-hmm. everyone knows that i'm a Steelers. go texans baby Woo, dude <laughs> it was it was pretty cool to watch this weekend's football unfolding i lost my pool so whatever there was no money involved. It's more for fun. Uh, really cool. After uh, last week's episode. Oh, wait. I, I know. There's so much stuff coming up. I, I just saw. <laughs> After last week's video from you guys, like, I started getting back into because your buddy had a smart box or whatever. So I just That's what that was called. I got I to gotta look that up. Yeah, it's not called a smart box. It's you have to do some stuff. Um, so I built like three of them. So if any of you guys want them, just chat. I'll give you one for free. Oh, thanks. Dude, holy shit. Wow. They're just raspberry pies. And then you have to, the whole thing is you got to keep up with certain things. So that's where it gets technical and you're just like, eh. but Godzilla zero or Godzilla. Sorry. All those movies are on there. Whatever you want. <laughs> sorry. I'm calling oh, just to make sure. <laughs> I'm not saying anything but other than that man it was just a fun week um building another arcade machine i don't know another arcade well, you have an arcade machine that you built already yeah full, like full cabinet like a full i i had a full cabinet i got rid of that when i left virginia but now they're just you can build them hold on I don't yeah you can build them relatively this one over. cheaper than you used to be able to 
so yeah, like kind of like this size. Oh, nice. Oh, so not like an actual full size arcade arcade cabinet. You but can put this in. You're, you're doing yeah. So you're just doing the 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 software. Yeah. yeah. Word. Gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. So that's that's just my nerdy stuff and blah 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 blah. I've been wanting to do that for the longest time, but I just, just don't have. I have I have everything you need because you own all the games. I'm assured. <laughs> assured. Absolutely. That's awesome, dude. That's fucking awesome, bro. Nice, man. Alrighty. Bob, how the hell you been, homie? I've been good. Just been chilling as I have the winter off like normal. So I'm just chilling, relaxing, <clears throat> trying to get cosplays in line, but I got to order a few things first. So waiting for all that to come back in stock. Uh, watched a lot of football this weekend. Chilled out with my girlfriend and friends and all of that fun stuff. And what... What did I watch? Oh, I, I got um the movie we, we wanted to do last year, Bad Dreams. I finally watched it. And it was, you know, typical 80s, you know, very Nightmare on Elm Street-esque. But it was still a good movie. So That, that was, was the one, one we couldn't find anywhere, right? Yeah, because yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't on anything streaming because streaming, okay. you know, sucks big chodes and they don't do oh, it well. Speak, speaking of streaming, I want to mention this before. I'm sorry, Bobby. I want to mention this before. I, God damn it. So, the fucking Godzilla channel on Pluto right now lost all the heisei and the millennium movies so now it's literally just the old ones that they have that they can show because the sony had the rights to the newer ones and they lost the rights so they can't got, show them who got those rights do we know yet supposedly criterion's trying to get them oh so oh. we might be seeing another box set from them this year if that's the truth because you know it's the 70th anniversary so why not you know put another box set so I mean, if, they, I, if they do i'm dying it there's 200 bucks. <laughs> so to, kind of, to kind of compensate, I noticed on Saturday night, they have added all of the Gamera movies instead. Oh, no shit. Nice. I like Gamera. <laughs> it's so cheesy. Gamera is really cheesy. The old ones are so cheesy. I've never it's watched cheese. any of those. <laughs> never did. I was only a Godzilla fan. And I agree with Brody there. I, I like Bad Dreams, too. No, I, I liked it. It... it <laughs> It could have been a little more jazzed up, but that's another conversation for another day. You might so see it that, come back, though, because of minus one, I saw. Mm -hmm. but anyway, yeah. sorry, Bob. But, um, yeah, no, like I said, hanging out with my lady, friends, family, watching football and watching the NFL refs fuck shit up. But that's nothing new. And, and then I finally got to sit down and watch this movie for the first time. So I'm ready to talk about it, but we need to hear Johnny real quick, please. Uh, let's see. Well, like I said earlier, I've been dealing with a shit ton of snow and it's thick and it's heavy but you know she said yeah luckily i only had a snow blow once so far yesterday so that wasn't was terrible hey, real, quick, real quick did you guys notice when gene shot left real quick there was a little icon that said jg jesus gene mm -hmm. jesus no, I gene notice. <laughs> i saw it real quick it said jg like oh jesus gene but no so did that I'm, and I'm still here. just give me a sec oh sure. you're good homie you're good but no, just uh, did a bunch of gaming and stuff because obviously wasn't really going out this fucking weekend anywhere. And I also, in the midst of do, working on podcast episodes and like cleaning because I, I hate, I don't know about you guys, man. I hate fucking dusting. So I always wait for like one good, just like preliminary <laughs> no, push. No, no, of no, no, no. You hate dusting unless it's your collectibles. Yeah, no, I fucking yeah. hate dusting my collectibles because I don't want to move fucking everything every goddamn time. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Look, such a pain in the dick. Here's what I do, okay? I don't dust any of my shit. My shit is dusty as fuck, but here's my reasoning for that. They're horror icons. They're gonna be dirty. So they need the get, one they thing, need that dust. The one giant collection that I do not dust are my proton packs because I feel they look way better with a nice. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's like, no, 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 that looks real. Um, it's supposed to look yeah. like that. No, no, no. There, it's, I got to get a good air purifier down here because it's just the one thing I do dust the biggest is, and I'm sure Chad can appreciate this is the game consoles. Cause you want to keep them nice and clean as best. Yes. As possible. But no, after, while doing that, I went on a MK legends marathon because now I own all fucking four on Blu-ray. So I started right with Scorpion's Revenge and went all the way back down to fucking Cage Match. And, um, well, I mean, that's at least two episodes, plus I got an MK1. So that's potentially three fatal fatality episodes I got running in the bank, I might be thinking. Um, so, 
Yeah, I'm trying to see if I could get at least a good like handful of them. And then I can make another like maybe six part little. I don't know. We'll see where we go from there. But the I would love to. The pod boss says Gene has very majestic hair, by the way. Ooh. Yeah, fuck that. I mean he does. Yes. If he had if he had a light fan going, dude, he'd like have that nice like you know, shampoo I almost, looking going. I almost oh. wish he would take his hat off and then it's just the complete Hulk Hogan going on. <laughs> God damn it, Gene. Ah. Ruin it for me. You ruin it. Yeah, leave the hat off. There. You look so fucking metal. <laughs> Jesus, Gene. No, just the Gene right there. Dude, do you want to stay Do you want to walk through the desert or? Jesus, Jesus. That is Dave Grohl sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Now I can't unsee that. <laughs> but uh, no, it's uh, it was a nice chill weekend, and yeah, man, went and got my <laughs> fucking popcorn from the local theater and watched this movie for the first time. To which I am ready to talk about right now. So, uh, yeah, we are talking House to the second story. But um, bum, who wants to take the plot rundown? This is Scoob's pick, Wait. so let's let him do it. Scuba, take it. Let's do it. Released August twenty eighth, nineteen eighty seven. Jesse McLaughlin's sitting on top of the world. He's a talented artist with a growing career and a beautiful girlfriend, and he's moving into a magnificent house, a very special house. A house which will plunge him into an incredible adventure, one where all of his dreams, fantasies, and nightmares will be realized. He'll meet his 175-year-old great-great-grandfather, encounter a giant barbarian, confront a pterodactyl, discover a crystal skull with magical life-restoring powers, and more. And he'll be thrust into a life-and-death battle struggle, encountering things guaranteed to horrify and delight, all without ever leaving his house. Directed by Ethan Wiley, Children of the Corn 5, Fields of Terror, Journey to the Forbidden Valley. Written by Ethan Wiley, House, Children of the Corn 5, Fields of Terror. Produced by Sean S. Cunningham, Terminal <laughs> Invasion, The Nurse, Purple Hair. Bobby? Starring R. E. Gross, Gone in 60 Seconds, Minority Report, as Jesse McLaughlin. Jonathan Stark, Fright Night, Mom and Dad, Save the World, as Charlie. Yes! Cor Riley, really? there we go. Royal Dano, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, Spaced Invaders as Gramps McLaughlin. Bill Mayer, politically incorrect. Bill Mar. 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 Whatever. Say Mayer? He did. Bobby, Bobby's first fuck up of 2024. <laughs> it's obvious. Yes, I'm going to keep tally this year. Oh, dear God, please don't. <laughs> don't do this to me. Pauly Shore is dead as. John Stateman, John Ratzenberger, Cheers, Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back, as Bill <laughs> Towner, Lar Park Lincoln, Fire in the 13th Part mm. 7, The New Blood, Knott's Landing, as Kate, Amy Yasbeck, Robin Hood, Men in Tights, The Mask, as Lana, a.k.a. How do we say that? Po 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 Poose Lips? It's, it's Poosey Lips. Poosey Lips. <laughs> That's, That's it. We're going. We're going with what Gene said. <laughs> uh, Dwyer Brown, Field of Dreams, Red Dragon as Clarence, Gregory Walcott, Plan Nine from Outer Space, Every Which Way But Loose as Sheriff, Jane Modine, Spring Break, Less Than Zero as Rochelle, Lenora May, When a Stranger Calls, The Gambler Part Three, The Legend, Continue continues. Oh, legend! The legend continues. There we go. <laughs> Fuck that up. As Judy, Kane Hunt as Gorilla, so the stunt coordinator. Frank Welker, Transformers, Scooby Doo as the voices of Slim Reeser, Baby Pterodactyl, and Kate Peter Puppy. Baby Pterodactyl sounds like a like a like a midget in a biker gang or something, it's, dude. Like, yes. It's a baby it's, duck ripoff. It's, it's also Catter Puppy because it's yeah, a it's Caterpillar cat puppy. puppy. Caterpillar yeah, cat cat Puppy. <laughs> See, I thought I would have went with uh, Dogapillar. That's what I was called. That's what I, I thought it would have been. Yeah, because it barks. That's why. It's called Dogapillar. And then when you Devin, say cat, when you say cat a puppy, it sounds like it's a cat, cat a or puppy. puppy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A puppy. Cat no. Cat no. <laughs> and then Devin DeVasquez, by love as. Body mm -hmm. count total of six. Chad? Music by Harry Manfredini. Death Date. Headless Horseman. Cinematography by Mac Alberg. Parasite and Zone Troopers. 
edited by Martin Nicholson, Halloween Town, Game of Thrones. Effects and makeup by Chris Wallace, Enemy Mine, Hot Shots. I would also uh, like to add that Phil Tippett did the stop motion creatures. Oh, no shit. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, mad guy. Awesome. Uh, distributed by New World Pictures, runtime of 88 midgets, rated PG 13, budget of 3 mil. There was 10 mil, so it, it, it broke even. At least. Yeah, it was successful. In order to. Now, what is this, dude? I feel like I just kind of like learned this, but like in order to really break even, you almost have to make double your budget, right? Correct. Like, Sometimes more than that. Lately, it's been more than that because uh, the advertisement budgets. The oh, advertisement. True. Yeah, yeah, no, true. Yeah, because yeah. that's obviously just everything. Disgusting now. Points by actors, all that stuff has to yeah. build up and blah, 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 blah. So, you know, yeah, they, you know, they doubled up and went a little bit more. So that's all right. Nice. They tripled even, so that's definitely a... And they yeah, made they a do. profit. Right. Yeah. And that's all the positive. Okay. And, say, and I think it did fairly well in rentals, too. All right. I have, a, I have a thing about that later, maybe. All right, boys. So this was my first viewing. Was it any... Bob, you said Same. it was off in years, too? Yeah. And then the three of you gentlemen have clearly seen this before. I've lots of times. Just, Yep, lots of times. This is one of those, speaking of rentals, this is one of the ones where I saw the cover <laughs> and I said, holy shit, I'm going to watch this. The second okay. Mm -hmm. So I will say straight off the bat, I said it be in, be while we were talking before, but so this is literally like this this part of the, these these movies are literally kind of like in the vein, I say of Chainsaw in terms of tone. The first movie is a horror movie with a little bit of comedy. Yeah. The second movie is comedy and it's it's in your face, it's different. But then you go to the third one, which I don't I forget if we're doing it or not, but if not, but that's also like back to straight horror. And so this is the chainsaw two of this franchise. Not a bad thing. I knew after the first 10 minutes, I'm like, yeah, this is totally not gonna be scary. It's gonna be interesting. And that's that's the way I'll put it. But I still had fun with it, I will say. Yeah, and I mean, and it stays in the vein of the first one to where, you know, the house is a character all of its own. Yeah. And, you know, from the get go, we, we get the store, you know, we get to see these parents. We don't know what they're running from or what's going on, and they're giving up their baby. And so that it, it kind of intrigues you from the get go to see exactly what's going on. Now, did it play off or did it pay off? Not really, but this is, this is, and I say this all the time with a lot of these older flicks that came out when I was a kid. This is one that I hold near and dear to my heart. It's just one of those movies that takes me back to a time where I had nothing to fucking worry about. I was sitting in front of a TV, popping in a VHS with my, you know, Kool-Aid drinks and, you know, snacks and whatever the hell. But, you know, and, and I can see how some people wouldn't like this movie. It, it, it's not per, a horror flick per se. If you showed it to a kid, a kid might get scared of it. But kids nowadays, I don't think kids nowadays would no. get scared of it like I did because, you know, some of the stuff was kind of scary, but it doesn't have that same horror tone that the first movie had. A lot of this is it's more fantasy. You know, you get the whole Western aspect of it, too. Yep. Granted, granted, you have a walking, talking zombie yep. grandfather. You know, I, I I don't know why. I just I love the character. Uh, of of gramps of gramps i just i love him so much like he was good he was I, I, I don't know like you know my grandfather was was old as shit had white hair white beard he did and he just kind of <laughs> kind of looked like gramps you know what i mean and he was my grandfather was Everyone a cowboy. has a gramps dude Period. yeah exactly you know and my grandfather was a cowboy so watching this even when i was younger i would say look grandpa you're on nice. tv and he'd be like shut up you're not on tv nice can I ramble off a of scuba real quick? So yeah, I, I like this because I don't, when did Halloween two come out or three? Sorry. 1981, 81, 82 was uh three. Okay. So this one kind of took me in that same vein. What, what people were trying to do is reinvent their original movie to kind of take it into different paths. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the house is the house. Here's this guy's story, and now here's this guy's story. Here's this guy's story. Same as Halloween three was supposed to take Halloween away from Mike Myers. I mean, kind of glad it didn't, but you know, yeah. we, we see what happened. But 
I, you know, and, and it's a different house, and I love that it's a different house. Yep. We do. We don't even know if it takes place. Bro, in the I same... played laser tag in this house. I'm pretty fucking. Scared, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna lie, yeah. man. And, and it's it's I I love the the design of the house itself, even though it makes absolutely no fucking sense why a cowboy would live in that, that... house. It makes no sense. He wasn't one room. Room. Like he was. First of all. That motherfucker was Indiana Jones because he was more than a cowboy, bro. He was oh, no, I know. I know he was. First of all, I, no, I didn't was. know you motherfuckers were signing me up for swashbuckling this episode because <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> hey. No, no, no. Was, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying it was very unexpected because as soon as we got to fighting Aztec dudes with swords, I was like, bro we're in the goonies what the fuck happened yeah. man like i don't know what's going on but yeah but imagine watching this as a kid it was watching as a kid and that funny. excitement because it's so different and every room is something different and it's not that scary tone that the first one had first one fucking terrified me i still have nightmares of that fat bitch i told y'all that when we yeah. fucking reviewed the first one that bitch still scares me but this one was different you know like you go to a prehistoric world where you're climbing a fucking tree to try to get this damn skull back that from a WWF you know, it, wrestler who is <laughs> yeah, yeah so not my bro, God. man I legit dude, I thought poor, that was Terry Funk <laughs> dude it looked like a first Graham, split second <laughs> poor Gramps got his ass kicked the entire fucking movie. <laughs> Everybody kicks and, Gramps' and, ass. And all he wanted was beer and to dance with that beautiful girl at the, Dude, the Halloween party. At the party, Let's yeah. Be honest, like if Gramps even came back alive like he was originally intended, he would have died from alcohol poisoning anyways. <laughs> he would have. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, it's gross to the liver. Yeah, he's it drinking out. the whole movie. And I love how when he first came back, the first thing he wanted to do is like, he just wanted to go out and fucking party. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'm not tired. He's like, I'm not tired. I want to go out. Let's, let's go hit the town. I just like it when, you know, he's like, I'm a 170-year-old fart. <laughs> Four got the beer. <laughs> now, I will say, as a first-time viewer, this movie personally didn't really do it for me. And I'll only yeah. say that because I feel like watching it at this age definitely construes where if, like, like Scoob just said, if I watched this as a child, or a kid at least, I would appreciate it way more for what it was. But, like, for this one, I was just kind of like, I need some horror. Like the the poster's the scariest thing of this movie. Yes, just, yeah, yeah, definitely. I was just thinking. This. No, it is. It is. I, but I mean, I'm the the slim was very scary. You know, and Grant. Oh, he wasn't. Voice. He was. He so, was scared. He was, the, really? The, the beginning. Really? Was, he was the, a fucking Looney Tune, bro. He was as a kid, What's his name? He fucking terrified. Terrified. He was Doctor Claw. Dr. Claw. It was Dr. Claw's voice. Yep. No, yep. I well, I know that, but he was fucking yeah, yeah. um oh my god, who's the cowboy Yosemite Looney Tune? Yeah, Yosemite. He was literally I'm Yosemite the... Sam zombified, bro. Like I can't <laughs> take that as yeah. a scary guy. Mm -hmm. Like it did need more. Yeah, and more there really brownies. wasn't I will agree. It did. There really, there really wasn't a lot of anything scary in this movie that's that that's why no. i say this is something you could show a kid yes because they're not going to get scared well, this is a i think it's a good intro to horror movie okay. for a kid but because it still has the fantasy aspect it throws in the swashbuckling it's got the western feel to it too but there's just that tiny little bit of horror and it has no plot play or uh, payoff what's so really? fucking ever at all at all, at all dude there at is all. nothing at all. ever actually like full circles back to be like okay that's solved what no <laughs> man what we we had lar park lincoln looking smoking fucking hot on screen mm -hmm. and then she gets mad at this random ex which is she cheating on him with her boss i don't fucking know this is the whole side where i, I want to know i didn't and i didn't get that impression why'd she kiss him i did why i did Bro, you don't just give, you, especially dude, your boss, you dude. don't just go up and give a peck. That's still dude, weird. Dude, it's fucking, it's Hollywood. So, yeah, here's that's, 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 that's a very show. That doesn't make it show, right. <laughs> that is a very show business thing. This is an action adventure movie where suspension of disbelief is what you need to go into this movie with. I love so, this right. film. I agree. So, I I love, so then, I, like I said, I, I enjoyed it. But I am a little bit with John on this because we, I know I know it's like a franchise because this is a franchise. I know they like to change it, and I get it. I mean, we've seen it 
throughout how many horror mm-hmm. franchises. Through. But I think in terms of a horror franchise, th- this one went from, you know, like I said, the, the horror, little bit of this to action adventure, and then it went back to horror. So I, I definitely feel that was definitely a left turn. And I also will say that was probably Sean Cunningham saying, well, don't make this one is horror. I don't want to be known as horror. And then clearly they had to go back to because something did ring. Do I, I just I just love the fact that we can hear Charlie off camera. That's great. No, it's Goobs. Don't we love it? <laughs> no, please. It's such a <laughs> cute little it. thing. We yes. Love it. He says Bobby's wrong. John's wrong. This is a great man. <laughs> yeah, but she's a child. That's why she would disagree. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah I, oh, I forgot to tell you. So last week when we were watching, you know, I was watching Nightmare on Elm Street before we did the show on on last Sunday. And I have her in her little walker thing right here. And she's sitting there just tuned in to Nightmare on Elm Street. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> let's go, baby girl. She's in a uh, nightmare. We were ever. sitting. So I'm sitting there getting ready to watch this yesterday. And Harper is just roller skating around through the living room. And she's like, oh, I got to leave. I got too much scary. I'm like, it's, it's not that scary. I'm like, Harper, you can easily watch this. I'm like, you sat through Tremors. You can sit through this. No problem. She's like, yeah. And I watched Halloween with you. I'm like, yeah, you did. You did, didn't you? She's like, we need to watch that one again. I said, okay, we can do that sometime. See, that didn't work when I tried that with my kiddo, because she'll still bring it. She's like, well, you you let me watch Friday 13th Part 3. And I was like, yeah, but you say that like it's a bad thing. Right. <laughs> but no, I mean, like I said, this movie, I'm not going to say like I hated it. I'm just saying, yeah. unfortunately, I found myself getting distracted to my phone. Yeah. So it didn't. No, and it's completely understandable because unfortunately. there's really, there's really no like, plot. it's all over the place. It's all over the place. There's really not a plot except for that there's two guys in this house going on adventures. Yeah. Now, Guy B or Jim Carrey Light, whatever the fuck we want. Charlie. To call him. <laughs> yes, um, Charlie. He was great. I loved him, dude. You know what I mean? Like, he was just dude. so random off the wall. Dude, where the fuck did he get an Uzi oh, from? It's, from? it's the 80s, bro. I was like, where the fuck? Everybody had Uzi. Everybody and had it wasn't Uzi, even man. the short barrel Uzi. It was I the know. fucking long <laughs> barrel Uzi. This long. And then he wanted Jesse to go in which, first. Which <laughs> question? I, lighter. Well, I I the, little, the little gun, too. <laughs> I forgot they made long barrel Uzis until I saw this. Right? Uh, it looks so weird. <laughs> now, when they go in... And do the predator scene where they just shoot the forest, right? Isn't yeah. it after the fact when he tries to shoot the caveman and realize it's a lighter? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. what the fuck was he doing that whole time during that fucking scene? Dude, I swear to God, it was firing for when he was shooting it. It was. It was flash coming from yeah. That's why I was like, wait a minute. What the fuck happened here, dude? Because I maybe he was, he was shooting like, it and it was just the it was. Just blah, it was the lighter trying was to just, light, and it, it was didn't just light. Flint going off. It was just the flint going off. That's, that's it could, yes, it been, was the that was the guy from, from Fright Night. Night. Yeah, it could, so, it could have been. It could have been cocaine too. Yeah, it could have been cocaine. Maybe. So there is. It's the eighties. Another thing I want to bring up because I mentioned this in the chat. So uh, the score of this movie is done by Mister Harry Manfredini. I don't know about the rest of. I don't know about the rest of you though, but I heard. Probably about more than half of part six's score in this whole movie. And I'm like, that's yep. in that's I would set the chat, I'm like, that's in that scene. I'm like, yep. I'm playing Friday the 13th part six right now. You know what's weird like, is maybe that's like, why there was parts that felt familiar to me, even though I was like, I've never seen this movie, but maybe yeah. that's what it was. Music. And then the, maybe it was the, the other funny part about it was is Chad's like, he's like, he's like, it's in there a little. I said, a little. There's a sound effect and Jason goes to hell that's in this movie. That ain't a little. That is throughout the whole series here. <laughs> but how great is it that we get Jason and Tina in this fucking movie? Yeah, before, oh, they right. before they were in Friday the 13th. Yeah, before they were in 7, yeah. Oh, man, dude, Tina's looking goddamn good in this She dude. looks so good in this movie. You get like Kane with a mullet. <laughs> like, and it, you know what it was? I think it was just a little bit because she had that more like brunette kind of hair, but she had that yes. like 80. I was like, hmm. Oh, dude, the brunette in her hair made her eyes pop even more. Yes. Yeah, yeah. man. That's why I was like, yo, why didn't we have Tina like that? Like, I know we were supposed to go Carrie, well, but, you know. Well, no, uh, fun fact is she auditioned with the hair, and then John Beekler made her change it again because they didn't accept her. So she went through changes after this movie to get that role. I mean, I don't want to shit on Beekler's name by any means. So obviously he had reasons, but I feel like you denied us something, but I should say that. <laughs> now, let me, let me ask you this, John, because... I, I, what movie was it? Popcorn, I think, when they had the big old Halloween party. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. We Where everyone loved yeah. that part. Yeah. Okay, so I was when I was when that part came up. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking in my head, 
I hope John likes this part. I hope he at least appreciates so, this part because uh, all the costumes are fucking cool. That was cool. Did, I did you see shitty Batman? No. <laughs> you didn't see shitty Batman. I did. I, he had I the cow. I was cow had no ears. It was like completely. Oh round. yeah. I thought. I think like I, a, I. I was thinking maybe that was like a weird Zorro. Maybe I just saw the. Owl. I don't know. No, know. it had like the shitty Batman logo did too. It? Like it was all like fucking so, twisted and shit. Did they ever mention prior? And this is where I might have like lost. Did they mention a party ever? Prior no, to no. That scene. No, Never because when you no. The guys like, oh, I invited some people over. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, like, I forgot I invited some people over. Charlie but, does it like out of the blue because Jesse's like Charlie gives no fucks. Jesse was like trying to research his family and how he got this house and all this stuff, and Charlie's like, "Hey, man, party!" <laughs> yeah. Now, party. I, I did like the continuous gag that Home Alone stole of somebody always driving into the driveway and knocking down the statue. Knocking yeah. down the <laughs> like, <laughs> that, I don't care. I, I'll give credit for, like, I love stupid shit like that, and especially when it's continuous. We got it at least three times, maybe four, I think. Yeah. That shit's always good. And especially yeah, but, that it started yeah. with him, too. Naked Gun does it better, though. Uh, it does. <laughs> for, first Naked Gun? Are you talking? Oh, wait, wait. Because I've all, dude, it's been so long since I've watched that series. The only one I can off. remember in my head is 33 and a third. I can't remember if it's the first or the second one where he's uh, pulling into the police station. He bumps into a car and the car just lurches forward and hits a cement truck and the cement comes down and pours inside the car. I don't remember if that's one. I don't remember one. that. It might be the first one then. It's just, it's just one of those quick little background gags, but I, Dude, I fucking love the naked gun of the police. So I will say positives for this movie for sure are effects and like yeah. physical effects. Gramps looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought he looked cool when he came out in his first like original mummy Aztec fucking face wearing thing. Like he looked scary actually for a second. Like it was cool. He, he popped out and Mel's like, help him, you idiot. Now here's my problem though. When Gramps is like, let's get me some clothes. Why did they get him some dusty old miner shit that he looked like he was buried in anyways? Why did they give the motherfucker some real clothes, dude? Like <laughs> they wanted him to be comfortable in his era. I want to see him in a fucking 80s pimp suit. God damn it. He's I would love to have seen him in a leather jacket. Be honest, honestly. That would have been fucking hilarious of him coming up in like a track suit. That or like during the Halloween bro, party. I'm saying like him in a Technicolor dream coat. Just fucking just okay, here's, yeah. here's, what, here's what I don't understand. One. Why did they keep Gramps in the basement? I mean, I get it. He was trying to like hide him from his girlfriend or whatever. But well, somebody why? had to watch after the dog pillar. And that two, too. also after that, and I guess I can kind of understand this, but why? Why did they send the, uh, the his ex girlfriend off in the cabin? It's a big fucking house. Just throw in a, one of the spare eighteen bedrooms. To which also oh, ex girlfriend plot goes nowhere. Just yeah, like, eh, fuck what? her. We're gonna get this hot other chick that was a. I, I think person. I swear to God, she was just there as a plot plot point to get Lar Park Lincoln out of there. That's all it was, I which so, I was yeah. kind of sad because I was like, no. Give but you more. forget, was, like Gramps oh, was thank, like, thank you, Julian. It was Naked Gun two and a half. Gramps was trying to get on that girl. So. Yeah, he was. He was <laughs> trying to get on anything. I think. <laughs> yeah, he, he'd been underground for a long time. <laughs> He's like, I gotta get something. His legs <laughs> but, went. But, but I think the reasoning. I think the reasoning for them not putting her in a room, though, is because they already knew that there was something going on with the house. Yeah, like, what if she ends so, up in some I know, other that's, dimension? That's, that's all I can, that's what I, can, yeah. I guess that's what I'm talking about, too. Just throw her so, out something. Like, by that this, point, the girlfriend was already gone. Just leave her there. Now, here's, her later. Here's, here's, one thing that, here's one thing that did annoy me watching it as an adult that I never thought of as a kid watching this movie. If the fucking skull keeps getting stolen when you fucking put it in the same exact spot, I put it there. Why do you keep putting yes, it there? Yes, Don't yes. put it there. Wait, 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 wait. Even better if it's so bad. And so, the, why just leave it right on Gramps' grave as you fucking drive off into Pioneer yeah, I didn't Sunset? Get that either. What the it's, fuck, bro? Here's my whole. This is my theory. This is just a personal theory about this. So I think like there's a bigger story to it. And this is me because I love the movie. There was something that needed to be done with that skull being put on that altar. And that adventure needed to happen for Jesse to actually find who Jesse was. Because remember, he's struggling at this point when he gets his house. Well, there is a comic book. I don't I've never read it. There's a Marvel comic. I don't know how many issues they put out of house. So it may. Yes. Of house Two, the second story. Really? So I don't know if it explains 
any of that in there if it goes more into detail. Um, and I don't know why I've never purchased it before because I've, I mean, fuck, I want to know now. So maybe Price I'll buy them and we'll look, let you know. Uh, go to mycomicshop.com and see if they have it. Right. That is like okay. the best online comic. But I, I, I deal with I deal with them before I deal with Mile High Comics. But, but that's that's why I, I thought they kept putting it on that same place is because there was a ritual going on it's of, of some sort. But I think it's all about Jesse becoming Jesse at the end of it. So that's just my up in the air theory. It also seemed like it really didn't have any power until it was placed on that altar in the house. Correct. What Probably. if? What if? Jesse is Jesse. Correct. Or Gramps. Jesse is Gramps. Well, yeah. Oh my god, it's just like Fry. So, He's his own grandpa. <laughs> so and Slim is Charlie. <laughs> Maybe. But like you know what? One thing we never talked about is in Gramps' photos of when he's alive, he's just still an old fucking man. Yeah. He yeah. was yeah. never not old. He was dude. never not old. Yeah. He's just infinitely Stan Lee. Like, he's just like, I am always this old and always will be. So, one person we didn't talk about, and possibly the best I know thing in this saying. entire fucking movie, is we're going to talk about John Ratzenberger's character because. <laughs> yeah. I want that movie. I don't want this movie. Yes. I want his I, movie. Yes. I need his. Whatever fucking League of Extraordinary Gentlemen he's part of, of electricians and adventurers. Oh, I need to watch this fucking movie. You know what it is? Yes. Oh my he, God. He's the one who did the electrical work on the house from house one. Yeah. That's why he knows. No, no, no. That's like because his best part. friend just happened to live next door. I, yeah. I'm going to 100% Everybody say it now. I don't care if I'm jumping name. ahead. He is my favorite. Like, he just comes in, oh yeah, this is going to cost you a I, lot. I, I mean, like, he's not a sword. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I expected well, him to like explain so much more, and he doesn't explain shit. And I feel no. like that's even better. <laughs> but he had the best lines like, "Up, oh, here's your problem. Looks like you got an alternate dimension in here." Yeah, he just says it so fucking casually the it's first cool time. Fuck, like, I had to rewind it and be like, "Wait, what? Like, yeah. did I just catch best, that right?" The best part about it is he doesn't fix anything, and he just hits him a card like. You ever need something else fixed or, you know, anything else? Give me a call. Have a good I day. Bill, adventurer. Like, they flip it over. It says Damn. adventurer on the back. Like, part time. The whole arc <laughs> is just the best. Like, I'm glad that we get another random, like, Cheers character in this series. Yes. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. cool. But, man, oh. like, his character was so much better than Norm. Dude. Yes. Oh, my but God. Norm was yes. so lovable in the first Norm one. was lovable, too, man. But Cliff brings it oh. in hard this time, bro. Like, <laughs> come on. Build a technician. All... Not only that, I love it that they're coming out. And he's like, hey, guys, what took you so long? He's like, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> oh, man. What, what probably happened was he probably told him, look, George did this in the first one. I want my character to be something completely don't make me the fucking neighbor the nosy neighbor or anything like that give let me one up him with this character but like with his voice in like act like just the way like because like he's just kind of like that older dude that's in like anything yeah you know they got this problem right here you yeah. know what i mean yeah. yeah he's perfect for it dude like i don't yeah. know oh i i want so much more of that dude like i like I, the, I, I like his tool chest. He has everything yeah. tool chest. Yeah. It's like a tiny tool chest. And he's just like. Kind of makes me want to watch cool. Cheers. <laughs> Dude, oh, like, honestly, like, if you, if somebody cosplayed as him, like, when he's all dusty and he comes in with just a little bit of smudges on the glasses, <laughs> dude, like, it would be fucking hilarious. Hand out business cards. Oh, my God. Yes. It would be great. You carry around, like, a little, you carry around a two box and a golden fucking sword. <laughs> <laughs> Be awesome, just go around dude. like this. Oh, you guys you know got a problem here. I might have to do this in fucking March of Mania just for the fuck of it. That you go up on the stage for the costume yes. contest. Go up the stage for the costume contest. Just set the toolbox down and open it up and take the sword out. You're like, oh, that's the problem right here. <laughs> oh, there's a problem. Just start ripping wires out of the wall. Oh, 
That's the best part too is the come like him ripping it just a little bit and then going back to like the hole he fucking made. Like no, well he rips it and then he goes, uh oh. Then he keeps right? going. Like uh, I like when he knocked he knocked the fucking lamp over. Eh, like, hey, don't worry about that. Didn't look that expensive. <laughs> no, that that his whole scene, that whole section, that was literally the best part of the whole movie. I was so sad when he went away. I was like, damn it. I was hoping you'd come back. But he had his card. Uh, he could have called him. That's true. Yeah. I mean, we all know that the series doesn't go really anywhere back to what it originally did. So we know he doesn't come. Well, I mean, four kind of does, but we know this character doesn't come back. Um, is there anything else you want? You boys want to discuss? Should I pop in? Mr. No, let's uh, hear from Brody. Brody yeah. Let's right. hear what the, the broadster has to say. Oh, man. I got tears in my eyes thinking about those fucking seeds. Why <laughs> it's a great movie. The Why it's a great movie. It, it's, I feel like it could have been better. Like I said, I'm not going to say it was terrible. I'm just saying I feel like I didn't see it at the right age. I got But you. I wish, I just wish like some things kind of like concluded in it. Came full circle. Yeah, 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 just a little. Yeah. Bring back Lar Park Lincoln for whatever reason, or at least like. You know, go find the random drunk girl you left in the well, house. The never <laughs> ending story. The never ending story didn't have an ending, so and that's never cool. end. That's why we got a second one <laughs> and a third one. By the way, the uh, the girl that played the uh, childlike empress, smoking hot. Yeah. All right. What was the big stone dude's name in that? Rock, Rock Biter. Biter. Rock Biter. All right. All righty, Brody Kane, everybody. Well, howdy fucking doody there, folks. It's DKB here back for another episode of Goramore. And this week I'm here to talk to you about House Part 2. Um, this one, to me, if I had to think of that whole entire fucking House franchise, I always think of Part 2. It's very nostalgic to me personally. Um, I think it's a film that really um, knows what it wants more so than the first film. I felt like the first film was a little bit all over the shop. It had different, you know, subplots happening here and there. But this film is just very basic. It's down to earth and it, it's sort of summer feels kid friendly in certain spots um even though it's not by all means though it's still a very fun film to watch as you put it on you can just sit back and enjoy it for what it fucking is it's definitely a fun time and a fun ride so let me just talk about the characters in this film i i, I really enjoy watching these characters unfold on the screen uh obviously a different variety of personality traits of each one of them but the way that this film flows throughout the storytelling, I think that these characters, or well, the actors that play the characters, really, um, you know, what to bring with their sense of humour upon this film. Like, it's not really too much over the top. It's just sort of is what it's needed to be. And it makes it a very fun time to see on film. It's like I was just, like I just mentioned before, it's just an easy flow of a watch. You know, you just sit back and chill and relax. My uh, special shout out to Gramps in this film. I love Gramps probably the most in this film. Obviously the way that he looks, which I'll talk about in a minute, but his personality trait of that old school humor where he just doesn't give a fuck. He's, yeah, it's like shoot first and then ask questions later. It's very comedic at times. And I love, he's just got a lovable sense of humor about him. And yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, I, I really like the characters in this film. So moving on to the practical effects of this film. Uh, I know we get a little bit of actually, sorry. To bring this up first, a little bit of claymation here and there, but I think that just adds a bit of depth to, uh, you know, what it is, like a product of its time. Just adds that character that I can really appreciate about filmmakers really trying to set out to make something cool and do something a little bit different. Um, and yeah, the practical effects that we get of Gramps and the other, uh, cowboy fucking zombie, I do apologize, but what we get is badass. Love it. Production design on this film. Fucking epic. I love it. And I like how they're able to adapt from another house and not use the same as the first film. And I actually think this house is a lot better. It creates that gothic aesthetic that I appreciate and love. Um, and I do think that the cinematography in this film was able to really capture all well, that production um, uh, value with this type of film, whether it was the lighting help whatever it was, it was just, it just flowed really beautifully on screen, I thought. Um, and what, some of the shots aren't, I, like, it's just standard filmmaking. I will admit that. It's nothing to be like, whoa, holy fuck, did you see that shot? It's not like that at all by any means. But like I was saying about the production, uh, value of like what we get of the interior and exterior scenes of the house, I thought it was done incredibly well. And it, 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 yeah, 
just yeah, awesome stuff. I love it. Yeah, I'll just go on record by saying this film is not a masterpiece by any means. But like I just said, if you've never seen this film, go in with an open mind, just sit back and relax and enjoy it for what the fuck it is. I do like how it's a different take on the first film as well, by feeling somewhat familiar to an extent, other than the title being House 2, whatever it is. They're able to add a little bit of a charm that the first film had into this film and give, give it that, you know, sequel that we wanted, but also giving us the sequel that we need and making it different, and that's... I, I can't appreciate that anymore. That's what I love, probably more so the most about this film. It just feels familiar in the franchise, but it's its, its own thing, and that's cool by me. Word. All in all, I'm going to have to give this a Guru Moore score of a three point... No, fuck it. I had fun with this film. I'm going to oh. give it a four. I'm going to give it a four. Making me go back. Making me go back. And, yeah, on. I might be feeling a little bit generous, but... It's very nostalgic to me, and what I've said about the film, I'll stand by till the day I fucking die. I really, yeah, I can appreciate this film, whatever it is. My score, I don't care, whatever. But anywho, this is DKB signing out, and I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about this film, and I'll catch you mother lickers next week. So cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Hey, sir. Hey, yeah, All right, let me get rid of my... All right. Flipper Rooney. All right, whatever. This is good enough. You know what? Scoops is looking that way. We'll put him this way. Um, Bobby. What's that? Can't see Bobby. His face is covered up by the gore. Oh, no. Hold on. I got it. I got it. You got it? I'll get it. We'll switch me and Bobby back. There we go. All right. Okay. So thank you, Brody, for that and setting the bar with a four. You know, so he mentioned the stop motion, and I know we kind of talked about it. Obviously, we know Tibbet mastermind behind that more than likely what the hell was the thing in the jungle that ate the caveman i have no fucking idea was it a mole it like a like a, it like a giant mole. mole i was getting like a rodent vibes at least of some kind that's why i was going it had, like, it had like the rodent like whiskers and everything yeah it looked like the friggin mouse from graveyard shift <laughs> all i know is that scene <laughs> made me want to watch the nickelodeon revision of land of the lost so bad for some reason dude and i don't know <laughs> why but okay so I, have have you seen the movie for land of the lost with, the will, with will ferrell, ferrell? oh i love it dude it's it's thank you that movie it's is so hilarious funny. it's that's one of the ones where it's like i know a lot of people are, i like will ferrell i'm like i get it dude he's got a shtick blah blah and I that's one it. that's one where you think would suck, right? Because it was kind of cheaply made. No. It, it doesn't matter that it's all green screen. I love that fucking movie. Because it's all green screen, they almost have to be that much like funnier. And mm. dude, I had tears in my eyes that first scene where he's just dumping piss all over himself, dude. And Danny McBride just call him. Oh my god, I fucking I watched that movie for McBride and Chaka. Those Chaka two- was Chaka. Not- Chaka. You say chorizo tacos, <laughs> dude. That's uh, chalk is chorizo taco. Chorizo taco. I see. I like McBride in like those kind of roles, dude. And another one that I think is an undersung McBride one, and I think we might have talked about it, is Your Highness. I know it's mm-hmm. not like a, I, don't need to watch I fucking love that movie. I don't need to watch that. It's so yeah, weird. I never saw it. No, it's so stupid. If you like this movie people. with fantasy, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. Think about it's uh-huh. like this. But add penises, and that's all you got. <laughs> Minotaur penis. Woo. Okay, now that's a must watch. Well, what, was, like there, you said what, what <laughs> was the weird puppet thing that was trying to give him to get a blowjob or something? What, remember <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck was that? It piece? was in the fucking um when he goes and sees his. It was the uh, Yoda his, essentially. No, yeah. <laughs> his mentor or whatever, and he's like, "He fucked you, didn't he?" Yeah. No. no. <laughs> I need to watch that movie. It's been a minute. All right. Um, so is anything else? Is there any main discussion topics that anybody wants to hit before we head it over to Chad Daddy here? Let's give it to Chad Daddy. All right. Chad Daddy. Daddy. What's I, behind I, those I, cheeks? I will give you what I have. You know, it's it's a little bit, but it's not, you know, like Nightmare on Elm Street ride to pick and choose. So to start off, to aid in the promotion of the movie, a number of giveaway items were sent to theaters. These included Crystal Skull Night Lights and nice. uh, Catter Puppy figurines. And oh, I didn't nice. know. I want to try and find these because those things are probably going for Boku bucks right now. You know what? I'm going to look them up right now. Good luck right. seeing if you can find it. So, yeah, right. Continuing on, Roy O'Dano was cast 
despite being uninsurable due to recent open heart surgery. Excuse me, I got hiccups. Mm -hmm. Which is weird, because this is right off of Ghoulies 2, right? I think he did this one right after Ghoulies 2. I thought Ghoulies 2 was after, but it could be wrong. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. Keep going. Uh, while billed as a sequel, this has no connection with the first film's plot. Obviously, we already talked about that. Yeah. Besides, you know, we don't even know if this exists in the same universe as the first house. It probably doesn't. What? Oh, was it so, here, Ryder? In the speaking of universes, I don't even know. Like wh- this universe has a lot of rules that just doesn't make sense. We never talked about that. You mean like the barbarian caveman that lived along with the dinosaurs and that giant prehistoric mole? We can go there, but we can go even f- <laughs> we we can rewind it a little bit further. These guys, granted he was looking for his grandfather thing, seemed very unsettled that they were talking to a fucking zombie. Like they were just very nonchalant, like cool. What's up? But not just that, look how easily just Gramps just made himself comfortable in the eighties, sitting there drinking beer and watching TV and not like and not like blowing his mind about it. While shitting well, on I, Ronald Reagan, I, I thought. While shitting on Ronald Reagan, <laughs> yes, who was, who was co president at the time. <laughs> I know that was pretty funny, dude. <laughs> he already knew magical shit fucking existed, so who knows what he saw yeah, this, in his time in the house? This, yeah. So he's just kind of like, eh, what the fuck? And also, this? how the hell did he know that Slim shot his grandkids? Here's here's the, the whole the, thing. The, like, how did he know? He was in the ground. Listen, I, that I, skull was with him. I don't want to be it. like I don't want to be like I don't want to be like the dude. But like look at the TV shows that people watch. Like Lost makes no sense. People watch the shit out of that. Bro, don't even get me started on Lost. Right. So, you know, X-Files makes no sense. Is there a story? No. Absolutely not. There is it makes though. no sense. This is why House 2 is so great because it makes no sense. Every little piece of that movie is such a like mind shoot to what happened to Gramps. Did Gramps was was the skull an interdimensional like travel device? Like who freaking knows? This is like why I love this movie because it makes no sense. Suspension of disbelief is what I love about movies. I don't like one that I'm gonna go in and watch, you know, Fast and the Furious part thirty five. You know what I mean? That's suspension you know. of disbelief right there for sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're trying to get fucking they're trying to break out fucking Paul Walker from hell or some shit. I'm gonna go, yeah. yeah, the devil. You know what, devil? They're pulling, they're pulling the you pineapple. You can't stop. I mean, if, they, if they've launched a car into space, that's the only <laughs> next thing is they need an interdimensional car now after that. So. so that's what I laugh about. Like, I love this film just for that simple fact that it is. Scoob said it. Like you said, everyone said it. This is one you can sit down with people and it doesn't make any sense and you don't have to explain it to them. It's just funny at any part you walk into it. You're you are 100 correct. This movie is a perfect sitting around the couch with buddies drinking beer, laughing at movie. Yes. Like watching it by yourself is whatever. I mean, I you know the wife and I laughed at some sp- stuff, whether we meant to or not. But like, <laughs> if we were all literally watching this live now, you know what I mean? Like the party yeah, movie we'd, for sure. We'd be drunk. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, continue all right. On. Uh, Ethan Wiley had the crystal skull made into his doorknob. Awesome. Oh, shit. Just, just imagine. <laughs> uh, several pieces of music in this were also used in Friday the 13th Part 6 from the previous year. Bobby. Bobby. Yeah. Wow. It was, it was, even the parts that weren't lifted directly were very Friday the 13th-esque. Yeah. Yep. I, I guess my issue, my only issue with that is just so it's too much, too much recycling. Like, question though, general. do you think? And this is just me, que- like spitballing. Do you think he's ever pigeonholed because of his name? Yes. Yes. Like he, kind of. he, they hire him because they want his name. He gives them a score, and they're like, "Yo, man, can you just make this a little bit more like Friday?" Th-? You like, you ever think that he's just all, and he's like, <sighs> oh, he's like, a, he's like so he ben just Affleck, re- he's like Ben Affleck meme. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why he's just like, you know what? Fuck these motherfuckers. I'm going to put in shit I already wrote. They ain't even going to fucking know. And they listen to it. Like, Perfect. We love it. You know what? <laughs> Affleck. What other movie did we do? Affleck was the bomb and fan. Uh, yeah, he was. Um, had, he did the that, score for it, and it was very Friday the 13th. Oh, that was, was the um, 
Slaughter, Slaughter High. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that had like part three esque kind of sounds to it. The fact that you could go through the other movies he's done, it's like, yeah, that's like part four. No, this is part six. Like, hey man, you know what? Don't knock the guy just because he fi- it took everybody forty years to figure it. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was so fucking pissed at Vengeance because they made this big deal that they got Harry Manfredini back to do the score for a Friday the Thirteenth fan yep. club, and the score was exactly the same score from the fucking game. Yeah, exactly the score from the game, which is great because he probably did it one up on them. <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, I'll give you something original. Here you yeah. go." Flash drive with the fucking game score. <laughs> I don't know, man. You I know what? Continue. I gotta say, kudos, kudos to that man for sure. Uh, Bill Tanner, yeah. the electrician adventurer, is played by John Ratzenberger, who's well known for playing Cliff Clavin on Cheers. House featured George George Went as Harold, who played Cliff's best friend Norm, also known as Norm Egg from Toy Story. Norm. Yes, fucking a dude. Yeah, this is like. Not that this movie needs to, like these movies make any sense, but like the third one is where you almost have them like team up coming into the house. Or no, no, no. Would be cool. the third one's Frasier. Then the fourth yeah. one, they all four all team up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd almost want the short little old fucking mean lady. Roman. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Bring in Rita. Here's what I want. This is what I actually want. The next house movie should be the cast of Cheers. Actually haunts uh, Central Perth, the cast of Friends. <laughs> and that's like the fight. But they have to say, Chandler, Chandler wouldn't be there. But so. those, those, but those ghosts have to have a drink in their hand the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, all of a sudden, Cheers is the house, like the Cheers bar. Oh, it or is. Or that, yeah, that, that too. Yeah. <laughs> Every time somebody goes to a pisser, they end up in a different bar. Like, do yeah or no? What if they? What if they're just going to bars and they just continuously walk into Cheers? Wait a minute. How, so are, you today? How are you today, Norm? I'm dead, but I need a beer. Yeah, awesome. I can just. I just picture when Norm and Cliff are sitting there side by side at the by on the bar. You know, Norm tur- turns around and he turns back around. There's Cliff, covered in dust except for glasses that he wasn't previously wearing. What the hell happened to you? Yeah, I fell into a hole in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, why? Well, or just like watch that second left around there. It's a little bit of a doozy. <laughs> Fuck it, anyway. Uh, what else you got, Chad Daddy? Uh, much lighter film and tone than its predecessor. This was given a PG thirteen rating while the original was R rated. A lot of this is just duh stuff, so, you know. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Dwyer Brown, who was William Katz's lieutenant in the Vietnam flashback sequence in the original, plays Clarence in this one. Oh. Awesome. There's a bit of a connection, but it's not the same person. Where we're... I see. I did like. I feel like the first one with him looking for his son's soul versus like this dude looking for his grandpa that he never met. <laughs> like, I don't know. You know what I mean? There's a little bit more. He wasn't really looking for his grandpa. I just wanted that damn crystal skull. True. Found That's what I'm saying, man. This was like Indiana Jones. Before it literally was Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. Okay, when Indiana Jones Indiana and the Crystal Jones. Skull came out, I was so pissed that their Crystal Skull did not look exactly like this one. I could yeah. see why. I could see that, like, you'd be like, no, man, if you're going to announce it like that, bro, you got it. You know what I mean? Especially that this movie had swashbuckling and shit in it, dude. It's like, come on. See, see the name Jones of this movie should be... Skull. The, is, the name of this movie should be Which House one? 2, The Crystal Skull. <laughs> what are you saying, Gene? I, I was going to say, would you watch this over Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull? Yeah. I've never yeah. watched Crystal Skull, so... Neither have I. It's... I'm going it's house. But it's, it's I, I mean... I mean, I know Shia LaBeouf's in it, and I am a Shia fan, but I know he's also like... Well, there's a reason movie. they killed him in the fucking last movie. They yeah. killed him? Yeah, oh, he shit. died in the war. Spoiler. Stop. <laughs> oh, shit. My bad. <laughs> you haven't seen the last Indiana Jones film yet? Jesus Christ, it. They killed him in this franchise. They killed him in Transformers. Yeah, he does. Wait, did they kill him in Transformers? It's 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 alluded to that he's dead. Yes. Is that when um, Wahlberg, Marky Mark took it over? See, I didn't watch those ones. Uh, The first one with Marky Mark was good. I jumped those and then went to Beast Wars like this year. So I was like, all right. Beast Wars is only a follow up to Bumblebee. 
Which Bumblebee was fucking... Oh, yeah, I did see Bumblebee. Bumblebee was fucking awesome. Bumblebee, Bumblebee was, was actually really good. The first five minutes of Bumblebee was the best Bro, thing ever. Give me that first yeah. five minutes, but for two hours. As a full fucking movie, yep. And then just play the soundtrack from the 1984 Transformers movies. The whole you thing. got the touch. <laughs> yep. But, all right. You got Chad, Danny, what else we got for behind? The first role for Playboy Playmate Devin DeVasquez, who played a virgin during a sacrifice scene. She said in an interview that she thought for sure they would have her stripped naked for it. She was used to posing nude for one nude for one photographer, but the thought of being naked in a room full of people for hours made her nervous. So she was relieved to, when she learned it was going to be PG thirteen. She could keep her clothes on. <laughs> Did she say anything in this movie? Like she not had no word. Nope, not it's one word. word. And it's great. Isn't it? She was in society. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. The shunting. Yeah, she was the girlfriend. Yeah, I guess I really am a butt. She was. Yeah, she was. So we have seen her boobies. Mm-hmm. Dude, all you have to do is just Google her Playboy. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm going to stop you there, Chad. I'm already there. <laughs> and it's not awkward that my fiance is sitting right behind me. She's probably like, damn shit. Yeah, she's probably stick. looking too. Whatever. Pirates. Yeah, pirates. She can't hear you. She can't hear you. Pirates? She doesn't always she hear. She, she, doesn't doesn't need, she, could she hears pirates from a mile has, away. Yeah, she's got the pirate sense. <laughs> See, you just said it, so now she's yeah, going to well, say, know, there now you she go. Knows. Now she knows, but... All right. Anyways, Chad... Uh, Devin DeVasquez said that while filming the scene where they're getting ready to sacrifice her, someone dropped a heavy prop skull on her head, and she got a slight concussion. They took her to the hospital, and producer was nervous. She may sue them. Apparently, she did not. Oh. <laughs> Slightly concussed, huh? <laughs> All right. That's shitty. But... Anything else, Chad? Did it? Well, that's really about it. You know, it's his first uh, one of his er- Bill Maher's earliest acting roles, and Ron Carroll appeared in the original Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, he played Sergeant Tierney. Yeah, I gotta say, for uh, Bill Maher's like being almost like first billing when the credits popped up, I expected a little bit more of like an elongated role. Like he kind of was involved in the the first section of it, the first half almost, but. Once him and Lard Park fucking walk off scene, it's like, all right, they're done. <laughs> it was kind of a douche. Oh, he was, always he, plays a douche, though. That's he what he's really, yeah. he really wasn't though. But he had, yeah, but he was, he, he was Perfect. still trying. He was still trying to get with her, though. He was trying Come to on. get her in pants. Hey. If he didn't already, he was trying to plow her. <laughs> he Come was, on. He was, <laughs> he was trying to Weinstein her. Oh, oh, Gene. That used to be called a casting couch back in the day. (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) Or still is. I'm not sure. Funny you should mention that because I did notice the name Lions Gate Studios in the credits at the end. Uh, (laughs) Ah. You'll never avoid. It's so impossible to almost avoid that if you're going to watch like any kind of like bigger movie. So, yep. Last 40 fucking years. All righty. Well, Chad, Daddy, thank you for the behind the scenes for what you could find there. All righty, boys. Let's start it off here. Where did we uh, where did we watch this? To be. To be. To be. To be. Gene Flicks. Ooh, all right. I have my own server. <laughs> nice. Gene Flicks. I did nice. go. I did look on Shutter. I didn't see it on there, but like it's, Heather discussed, it might be on just Prime with Shutter, and I don't know why it, it would be different. It is on uh, Prime. It is. It's on like a random free channel too. Yeah, um, it's Plex. Pluto, I think, had it too. Plex, yeah. Pluto, it. Pluto. That's never mind. Pluto. Alrighty, douche of the film. Let me go first because I have a. So to me, it's it's between two. So Charlie's kind of a douche. His friend. Yeah. Like, takes yeah. over his house, makes a party, blah 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 blah. But Bill Maher is my second douche. There's so many. It's like, how do you, how do you say Le douche. douche? Le douche. Yeah. So I would say slim. My 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 pick is slim because slim pickings. Yeah, he was. You know, <laughs> he was a dick. Fuck him. Um, I mean, actually, I, I'm just hey, going to go slim too because technically, hey. without him, we wouldn't have the movie. So, hey, Dave. Hmm. I'm I'm gonna go with Laura Park Lincoln. Oh, it's she me. she was kind of cunty the second she stepped in that house. That was the she other was. one. And That's so what I'm think- saying. I wonder if she was already cheating on the dude, and she definitely was. Not a doubt. 
she was a she's she was in like the music real, industry. So she was maybe. a really snooty person. I just it, she rubbed me the wrong way. Was she hot? Oh that, god, yeah. Say she could totally rub me the right the way. way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but the snootiness with the look works. Maybe that's just me. Maybe yeah. I'm fucked up. I don't know. Oh no, it works. It works. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're works. not wrong. <laughs> uh Heather's going Bill Maher. Um I mean Bill Maher it seems like, Bill Maher is like the human douche, and then obviously our like magic douche would have to be <laughs> <laughs> Magic douche. Would have to be uh, Slim Pickens there. Where? Slim Wicken. Uh, all right. So everybody got that then? You got yeah. douches? All right. Favorite kill? The barbarian. I don't really remember rat. though. The giant mole worm. Yeah. That's what I'm going with. I was going to say, that's the most I... memorable to me for sure. Yeah, more I, mean, I, I can't think of anything else. I like, I like Slim. Slim. I like Slim at the end. Slim's head getting shot, shot, shot off. Yeah, I think that's cool as shit. Like, that's cool. Every... <laughs> but he didn't die. He didn't die, but it's really cool. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, we had six deaths. Who else died? That I'm trying to. Remember. Said mom and died died in the beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So oh, there's two. So there's two. We got caveman three. Caveman. Are you counting Slim. Pops Slim. and Slim? Slim or Gramps and, and there's uh, five. Oh, the one Aztec that got knocked into the pit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm actually going to go with the parents. Okay. It did why. set off the movie right. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to go with a weird uh, mole thing. I don't know. Rat mole fucking lizard thing. <laughs> All right. Just because it was gross and claymation-y. <laughs> um, best scene. Bill Tucker. Right. All of his. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say yeah. it's got to be Cliff yeah. Haven. Yeah. No <laughs> From when he shows up to when he leaves. Yeah, the yep. whole swashbuckling scene. Absolutely. Worst moment or scene. I'm gonna say when Bill Maher shows up. That's like like first time, the, or what are we talking? So the. The lady, no, so it's kind of like a two scenes put together. So it's his girlfriend or fiance or whatever. She's listening, and then Charlie goes into the other room with the other girl, and she's trying to sing, and then she calls Bill Maher, and then Bill Maher pulls up in that Porsche or whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know. That is, I hate that whole scene. It makes me feel like all those characters are bad and toxic. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, they probably are. Hmm. Yeah. Bill Maher in general sucks. I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna um, go with the end scene of them burying Gramps and then just leaving the skull there and leaving in because Pioneer what the Town, fuck? dude. Like in yeah, Pioneer, like yeah, I'm going with that because that really didn't make any sense. Like, why? Why did? Why did they go to live in like the old West? I don't. <laughs> well, they because they would have been fucked with the cops. Yeah. That's why they didn't go back because the cops think that Jesse's the one who shot at them. They don't. They're not gonna believe him that a fucking undead cowboy shot at them. I like that he got the one cop in the shoulder. I didn't expect that. I was like, oh, shit. yeah, that was. A, the... <sighs> I still feel like time. I mean, I guess I don't know. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with that ending too. I, I... no, I I so, all, you know, I'm you know, so change. All the, the, this movie's I'm, fading. I don't know why. Very fast as we keep going. I'm changing. I'm changing my answer. I'm changing it to the really shitty claymation brontosaurus that was in the background. <laughs> oh, I love wow. that shot. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. That was horrible. I love that, that shot. You would see in Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah. I loved it, dude. I don't know. It just reminded me of like old school fucking King Kong shit or something like that. Like, okay, it was pretty die. bad, though. Hmm. God damn it! You had to say Pee Wee. Now fucking get out of bed's playing in my. <laughs> Baby, no, all right um ooh, worst moment worst moment worst moment um not the party <laughs> scene in itself because i liked all the costumes and shit but i would say like when the ex-girlfriend's just trying to like drunkenly kiss on him and he's not really trying to stop or like handle the situation in any which way shape or form he just you seems kind of like man accepting 
Yeah, yeah like bothered. anything and everything. Like, I was like, she went for a big fat sloppy kiss, and he was just like, okay. I'm like, well. But like, he didn't try defending himself in, in any which way, shape, or form either. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, I wonder if he already knew that she was maybe messing around with the boss, and that's why he didn't Who care. Knows? I don't know. Would have been better if it was a shitty Triceratops. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do we all get worse moment here? I think so. Mm-hmm. Opening scene, boys. Did it hook you in? Uh, yep. Yeah, I guess. I, I was mean, interested. I was. I, inter- like, I was interested, but that changed. I liked how they portrayed Slim in the in the beginning, where you didn't really get to see his face yeah. or anything, and it was all yes. shadowed out. That was cool. Okay, so like, why? His parents were shot and killed in the beginning. So why didn't he inherit this house until he was like well into his twenties? What Slim? No, the no, main character. Uh, yeah. Why? Because I I, because I think there's a whole intro sequence. I don't know where it's just like he gets abandoned. So baby Jesse or whatever is abandoned. I actually liked the end. Or maybe he got it. Maybe he got adopted, yeah. and he didn't know, and they never told him until like it was dead, <sighs> until he was fair enough. He found out when he was older. But I like I like the intro because it makes you feel like it's going to be a scary movie, and then all of a sudden it's just like goofy as rain, shit. rainbows and <laughs> and shapes and colors. <laughs> yeah, like you think you're about to get something scary, and then you get dog a pillar, and you're like, oh, all right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, most attractive character, and there's a few to choose from. I think we all know who it is. I mean, I think everybody's probably going to be different here, but... I think uh, everybody's yep. different. <sighs> really? Yep. I'll go first. Go ahead, Scoops. The Aztec Virgin. I, I figured it. you were going to go with that. Mm. That's fair. Gene, go ahead. What do you got, bud? Uh, I got Laura Park. Good choice. Solid. I feel like I know Chad Daddy's, but Chad Daddy. Go I think around. I know John. I am not I I going to go with the redhead this time. Oh, Chad oh. Daddy's throwing me the curve. Oh, off. Sh- only because she looked good in this, but she looked so much hotter in Men in Tights. Oh my gosh, she does, dude. So, so much, dude. She gets hotter later. I'm actually giving it to uh, the ex girlfriend. But I do yeah. like, yeah. just like in Men in Tights, that she has no problem parading around in underwear. It's true. I did like dancing. <laughs> what, in what, yeah, whether it's underwear or it's metal fucking uh, jack straps. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm going against type and uh, going with the blonde instead of a redhead. Okay. Bob? I'm actually agreeing with Chad because I was thinking about the, the ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She, was, oh. she was super cute and so flirty. Oh, yeah. She was a lot taller Heather, than him. Too, agree. Was awesome she was. Of. She was way taller yeah, than him. Good for him. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Climb that tree. Um, I'm kind tied. Of makes me wonder. <laughs> I'm I'm tied. I'm honestly tied, man. Because Lar Park had my attention the whole time she was on the screen, but then they brought in that uh, Aztec lady, and I was like, "Well, hello." <laughs> so I think I'm gonna have to go with her, actually. All right. As Lar Park as a second, dude. I'm kind of with just, Scoobs dude, on that, man. Like, I don't... Just the way you said that, like, well, I was kind of on Lar Park, and then I saw the essay, we're like, well, hello. If I could pick one. <laughs> he was like, well, hola. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, hola, senorita. Steve, Steve, how do you tell her she's hot in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> El Fuego. <laughs> yeah, right? Fuck it, hey, dude. Uh... <laughs> Although, who knows, man? She could, like, all of a sudden speak and have, like, the worst, most horrendous voice. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to go back. Ah, friend, ah, ah. You know what, though? But that's, no, but, that's not horrendous to me. That works for me for some reason. See, but I'm going to take this back full circle. But what if she gives you really tiny Spanish church Tostitos? Or, ooh. I mean, either way, I'm already in that religion. So, whoever I'm with, I'm that makes your choice. Mexican right. Jesus, Jesus, fuck it, hey, bro. Okay, let's go, Padres. Um, did the score set the mood? Kind of ish, yes. Yeah, I mean, no. if, if, if the mood was to make you think you were watching Friday the 13th, part six, all over again, mm. I, oh, yes, I'm gonna say I yes, especially I think it did in the scene, it was a veg where. Like in the scene where Slim comes back at the dinner table, yeah, 
like definitely that scene of him fucking just coming out of that fucking. That platter. was cool. I that was like almost that. best scene for me. That I could understand that. That was that, that was nice. That actually felt a little more into the horror genre, which I was like, all right, here we go. Yeah. But all right. I didn't even see Heather's comments, but yes. Uh <laughs> <laughs> okay. Best song. Whatever that 80s yeah. fucking yeah, the dance. party old western yeah. party song that fucking yes. Gramps was dancing to. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I agree. 110 percent Yep. That was such a cool fucking mashup. All right. Favorite character. Bill Technicians. I I'm going Bill to Bill. I'm going the technician, dude. I'm going Bill. He like he came on screen and I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah. He, he was, was my great, Gramps, though. That's fair. See, uh Bill's my John Goodman in arachnophobia. You know what I mean? Just the random, like, I need that dude's story more than the actual story we're watching. <laughs> what was How his name? Get... What the hell is his name? It was the was Delvin? No, no, Bill. No, 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 John Goodman. John Goodman. I had oh, John, Delbert. Oh, Delbert. Yeah, Delbert. Delbert. Yeah, thank you. All right, was it scary? Hell no, no, no. no. family no, friendly. No, no, no. Does it hold up today? Yes, in my opinion, it does for the most part. Uh, so, I, I, I'm, 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 gonna like say, I'm gonna honestly say no. I feel like I could definitely have like. I should have watched this with my kid because that would have been a way better judge of like how she felt on it. I feel like you could still easily watch this with kids though. Like if you wanted to watch a bunch of kids horror movies, like, yo, we're going to watch monster squad, probably throw this in there. What's that one you had us watch before scoops, the gate, the gate, the gate. gate. you can throw the that gate. in there. So fuck those little demons. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right. Take off dude. Two minutes. While you're holding it, Chad, boys, does it hold up today? What? Oh, we just said that. No, I'm just kidding. All right. How is the acting? I think it's pretty good. It's it was it was. I mean, everybody in it was was solid. Even the voice of Doctor Claw, which was awesome. Like, yeah. I'll get you next time. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, no. The acting was solid. I will say for everyone who was in it, they did they did what they needed. It Wait. Kind of it the voice of Doctor Claw wasn't um, what's his name from um, oh my fuck, it's Frank Welker. Or it's oh, yeah. okay, nope, nope, nope. Sorry, never mind. I'm thinking of uh, what's his name that voices Shredder. That's where I was confusing it. My bad. Yeah. Oh no, that's Uncle Phil. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was like. I was like, is this Uncle Phil too? I think but. it's Frank Welker, right? Because yeah, it's Frank Welker. Yeah. <laughs> Frank Welker does the voice of like everything. Everything. Bro, Frank Welker does the sound or the voice for the Anaconda and Anaconda. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's doing those like, hey, fucking. I want that job, dude. I need that job. He's so. Oh funny. god! Now, now you're making me think of that fucking video that Cam shared earlier. <laughs> oh, with the, the girl yeah. in the gun suit. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't watch it. It's like furries at a con being trying to be scary. Sad. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Chad, how was your act? How was the acting to you? It's all right. All right. I didn't Worked like Bill Maher's acting in this. I feel like this might have been like his first role. In- it is his first film. Is it? Yeah. You could tell. Okay. Did we like the cinematography? You yes. know what? Some of it I did. I like we talked we just discussed uh, Slim coming out of the table. Great fucking Very shot. Cool mm-hmm. I also liked when they bust into the room and oh the first time they go into the room and they see the room opening into the jungle. Like that was cool. Like it just looked oh. cool. And, yeah. Oh, house. Even the also, fireplace. Th- that's my favorite set is the jungle. The fireplace. I like the living room. I, the living room is my favorite. I, I love the, the especially the staircase. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, my wife is getting so pissed. She's like, who would have a staircase like this? I'm like, it's an Aztec temple. Grandpa already said that. <laughs> they built it on the blood of virgins. Go I'm ahead. I'm telling you, man. I literally played laser tag in that place when I went to Lake George. <laughs> Fucking looked exactly like it. All right. Any other cool shots that anyone could think of? I was going to say, those are like, 
main I, two. I, I love the ending sequence. I really do. I'm sorry you guys don't like the skull and the gravestone and <clears throat> them pulling away on the covered wagon with whatever they could carry. To me, yeah, I don't know. like a perfect kind of time portal sequel. I love that portion of it. Where like Jesse's it. like, I'm I'm Jesse. You know what I mean? I'm not Gramps anymore. I like the scene of Jesse and Charlie falling off that tree in the jungle and it transitions to them falling through. The, oh, yes. Falling through oh, the, that was cool. the bed. Why didn't you take the stairs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just is so on face. Like, I love it. Also, you know what? One thing I never questioned is like, and I know he was trying to show Gramps, but like after, and I'm talking about like when he was trying to prove the existence in the kitchen and he opened it and it was the girlfriend because it was the Scooby-Doo switch around thing. Why didn't he go for like evidence B of the fucking pterodactyl that he just shoved I thought, in there? I thought like, the same thing. But then he goes to it right after the fact, and it's like, no, drag their asses back here. And be like, yo, look at this motherfucking thing, dude. Like, he, he even says, he's like, it might be a mummy or it might be a pterodactyl. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, no, man, you clearly put the pterodactyl up in the smaller shelf, dude. Like, what the fuck? Again, this is why this movie is fantastic. Also, real quick, can't ignore the fact that Gramps feeding the Dog caterpillar beer in the baby bottle. Yeah, That's awesome. yeah in the fucking baby bottle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Did we like the premise? Yeah. I do. I like the idea of it. I mean, I like the idea of an interdimensional house going through some stuff. Personally, Hi, I wish it was a little bit more Maybe horror, Charlie. but I, uh, actually, I will say I'm on the same boat with John. I, I, have, I love the idea, but oh, oh, oh no. look at that onesie! Check out the onesie. Oh, 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 oh so it. cute. Part five, nice. Nah, look good. Wait. Oh, I thought I it, it almost looked like it was like that Harvey shot for a second. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is that is awesome. I love it. Nice. Hell yeah, man. She's grown up right. I'm happy. Mm-hmm. I'm happy. No, finish your statement. I wanted to hear that. For the premise. Yeah. Me? Oh. Weren't you saying about who? Yeah, weren't you oh, saying I, I said I said I'm I'm pretty much in the same boat as you, John. Like I love the premise, but I don't know. Like I, I like I said, I don't hate the movie. I like it, but like something it wasn't clicking on all cylinders for me. I think it still could have been executed way better. I I love the premise. I I mean it's kind of the premise of the first one. Like I said, the house is a character in in and of its own, and I I love the premise of this film. Word word. All right, boys, was the climax satisfying? Not really. Not really. No. No, not really at at all. Um, it didn't really wrap up anything. No, it didn't at all. I mean, so no, no, because Grandpa didn't become alive. He still died. Yeah. And That's I mean, just, it's the old west. I mean, me, I guess like he gets to reset his life, but... and he gets the, me, hot, the Aztec girl. But for me, it kind of does because you don't know the second part of that story. Now, here's here's what I'm wondering too: Are they in the past? You don't, or no. is it an alternate dimension? See, I think the. Like, I you don't know with any of these, honestly. Are they even? Oh, are they just? Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, oh! Introducing to you the Pod Boss T.J. Bowser. Look at that haircut! Yeah, yeah. look at that. That's what the same haircut. Same haircut. You guys haven't seen me like this. Holy shit! Yeah, no, not, not in a minute, dude. Time. Not at the time. No, I have okay. not. <laughs> How you doing, sir? Pretty good. This isn't the right angle. Hold on. This is not the right angle. Boss man, I'm not gonna lie. Those shelves are looking a little empty back there. I think you need to fill them. It's not the right angle. (laughs) You assholes! There we go. (laughs) I can still see the emptiness. Yeah, you need more. It's because I need to expand. See, it was just this one. Then I had to expand this one. So so now my capacity's three (laughs) thousand. So now you just that just and that'll be filled within six months. (laughs) Guaranteed. Six months. All right, that's the I bat. said within, within, oh, within. Okay. Yes, that's all vinegar syndrome, and that's everything else. So, fuck it, hey. So, what are your thoughts on this movie, Pod Boss? House two, tremendous special effects, and this is the one with the old dude, correct? 
Yes, Grandpa. Yes, yes. Grandpa. Fantastic. I I love it. Sean can Sean Cunningham can go suck a bunch of dicks, uh, <laughs> but House Two, it's pretty good. I mean, he didn't direct it or anything, so ah, he did the first one. He's connected it enough. <laughs> true, 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 true. Who directed um, this one, by the way? Uh, Hold on. dude who did um, is... Children of the Corn Five. What was it? What the ah, hell? Ethan Wiley. Ethan Wiley. Yep. There you go. I don't know what the other ones. Are anything there. else of note that he did? Ethan Wiley. No, I can't think of anything at all. Um, b- 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 not Journey really. to the Forbidden Valley. Never heard of that one. Nah. So nope. nothing of note, really. Not really. No. At least not in the genre, anyway. Yeah. You forget Jason X. No, that's James Isaac. That James oh, that's Isaac. Isaac. Yeah. Sorry. Who did the third yeah. one? He made a cameo in uh, Cronenberg's Existence, which I just got from Vincent. And I don't know if you guys know this, Chad. Did you know it had a skin, like? cover on it hmm. like yeah. fleshy cover yes it's fucking oh. weird i don't like touching it <laughs> <laughs> interesting <laughs> is it one of those ones where like you don't like to but for Dude, some reason you I, still I, do i, like, I will <laughs> touch it but i'll show you it's fucking weird ah uh, it's gross just touching it is it like when you touch a uh, it looks like skin towels? it looks like skin hold on let me change the color profile yeah, say, you're in black, you're black and, and white, white. say wait a minute wait which one is it oh it's this one hold on Wait, it's one wrong of these. Hole, wrong hole. <laughs> I don't even know what you... It's not one of these buttons. It's not changing. Hold on. Wait. Wait. What happened? Uh, you turned it off. Your audio is still here. It's all good. <laughs> A flesh. I'm still here. So, so is that like? I mean, I don't know how you boys feel, but like, you know, when you touch like, those back. cleaning cloths that are just like, ugh. Oh, like yeah, yeah. It's fleshy. Like you see that? Like there's hair. It's oh, fleshy. Oh, what the hell? Oh, it's gross. What? It's so fucking gross. I just realized that <laughs> when I bought it and then I touched it and I was like, dropped it and I was like, what the fuck is this? That's so fucking I only hope this, That is so Cronenberg, though. I only it hope at least so one, one person out there that touched that was instantaneously like, like just... <laughs> look at this. This is the box. It feels like flesh it's and then breath. it's a slipcover. So, uh, where did you get. Okay. <laughs> So I have two questions for you. Like, where did you get that? And, Vincent. <laughs> and secondly, like, we can never co- cover existence on this film. No. Like, because that movie, it is by far one of my favorite Cronenbergs, but Beyond the Fly, the remake yeah. of the Fly. I think Vincent? it's great. Uh, man, that's a cool. Where did you just, uh, Vinegar Syndrome. Just, yep. Bossman, didn't you just say Cronenberg's dropping a new one soon? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, the one with the uh, the screens in the uh, no, headstones. Yeah, 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 what the hell is it? Well, it sounds interesting. Hey, All right, boys, we got this kid stuff. So real quick, real quick, just um, Gene wasn't wrong when he mentioned Jason X because Ethan Wiley did do part of the soundtrack for Jason X. Oh, no shit. Yeah, and he did special effects on Star Wars uh, Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. No shit. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, you know what, boys? So uh, we got to, we did say climax. But, Correct. Uh, we got to decide whether we're going to recycle, rewind, remake, or reboot this. I'm going to rewind it. Same. It's It's got great nostalgic value to me. Rewind. Here's a question. How could you reboot this? Make it scarier? It's cool. Well, the house franchise as a whole in today's well, I've never seen three and four, so I don't Correct. know. Awesome. Three Here's has I'll... nothing to do with anything with the series. It's kind of like right. they made a movie and attacked and like tacked three on. I would, okay, I would. You, you might have seen three because it's all. It also goes by the name of the horror show. horror show. Yeah, Lance Hendrickson, I believe. Yes. Mm-hmm. I would. I would. I would reboot it as Jesse coming back as Gramps, kind of like full circle. Because that's a question that that's that's what I said, TJ. Or that you know, Gene and I mentioned with Jesse going back in time, per se, or alternate dimension, whatever the fuck. He ended up in Western times. What if Jesse was Gramps? Well, I think that's and Charlie and Charlie was slim. There you go. And it all started because they both wanted to bang. They uh, wanted the skull back. Or they were the one that banged the Aztec. Yeah, they, they wanted, wanted to bang the Aztec, Aztec and uh, that's how it started, man. <laughs> what the fuck did Bobby go? 
I don't know. He dropped a- out. His, <laughs> his ship bogged down and he was gone. Well, he got intimidated. He's like, the boss is here. I can't take it. Didn't it sound like he popped back in for a second, though? It I did. Heard the little it totally movie. did. I heard him. So I'm like, I'm looking for it. And I'm like, where the fuck is it? All right. Well, he better give us his damn score, I right? Because that's what we're doing right now. So let's rate this bitch. Brody started it off setting the bar at a four. Jesus Gene, what do you got, buddy? So I'm real. I'm like kind of sad that Brody gave it a four because I'm going to give it a three eight. I'm going to tone it down a little bit because I love this film. But you got to be fair to yourself, homie. That's all good. I, I love there the movie. Hey, hey there he is. He's back. I heard it like just like came out. That's all good. That happens. Boss man, what do you want to rate this out of five uh, dog of pillars? Three and a half. Three and a half. All right. Bob? Uh, all right. Uh, 2.8. 2.8, really? Oh, wow, well, yeah. It was just not the biggest time. fan. That's a decent. <laughs> it's above average. Scuba. Yeah. Okay, as much as I love this movie, as much as I loved it as a kid growing up, watching it now as an adult, I I have to be true to myself. And as much as I want to give it a four, I can't. I'm going to give it a 3.5. All right. Baby Charlie. Oh, Charlie yeah. gives it a five. <laughs> Charlie was just I, squealing I, in the back. I, was, yeah, I heard her. Five. She was ranting about it. But like, she said five. She said five. <laughs> Chad Daddy? You know, I cannot disagree with Scoobs. You know, it has great nostalgic value, mm. but it is still pretty flawed as far as like really not having much of a story to go by. Sequelitis. Yeah. Yeah. It had yeah, a lot yeah. of little plot threads that really didn't go anywhere. Nothing really got wrapped up. Um, yeah, I'm going to give it a 3.5 as well. 3.5er. And let's see, for a first time, like I said, I don't have the nostalgia factor joke going for me. I can appreciate it for being like a younger kid's on the verge of horror esque. I think I'm going to give it a solid three. Fair enough. And that's me even coming in saying I didn't particularly like this, but I could still appreciate it for what it. It just tells one is such an unusually fun film that when it, you place it next to this one, it's just. No. Well, it's like Bobby said Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1, yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. And then it goes back to being serious yeah. after two, you know, 100%. kind of the same thing. Ah, and then four goes back to being funny. <laughs> yeah. All righty. So that with the combined set of seven scores, we have a 3.4. Whoa. For 1987's okay. House to the Second Story. I think That's it's very fair. fair. Very, very fair. fair. All right. Chad Daddy, what are we doing next week, homie? Well, next week, we're going to see what happens when aliens invade. We are watching A Quiet Place. Oh, oh no shit. No. Nice. I hate this movie. That episode will have no movie. audio. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, everybody's going to be we quiet. One week to learn sign language. <laughs> oh, I know sign language. It will be a captions <laughs> only episode. <laughs> All right. So you can find this on Paramount, Sling. It's free. Hulu's premium, Roku. Someplace called Fubo. We are getting a quiet place uh, day one or mm-hmm. something like that called. Yeah. 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 Day one. Really? I didn't know we were getting a third one. Yeah, Krasinski's going crazy. He, you know, he became Reed Richards and just went nuts. Just nuts. <laughs> well, it happens when you get turned into spaghetti. Yeah, he's just so flexible now. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's a quiet nice. place. His arm bending around his back leg. Hey, as long as we're not getting Bird Box sequels, we're good. <laughs> no, please. Do. Oh God, I never no. even saw the sequel to that. A Bird Box uh, a- episode Thank for you. Gordon Moore is just an episode audio only. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no, we'll be, it'll be video, but we'll be sitting there. Black <laughs> screen the whole time. <laughs> but, was that the one? Uh, was that the Netflix with one? Sandra Bullock? Yeah, yeah. with yeah. Uh, yeah. what's her name from Julia Sandra Roberts? Bullock. Sandra, Bullock. Sandra Bullock. That's no, Sandra Bullock. Bullock. Plus, that moves very fast. Um, all right. oh, yeah, Plus, you couldn't slow down. That's right. All righty, so next week, Quiet Place. Awesome. Anything nerdy to get on about today, boys? That's I, got I was nothing. just trying to... I don't got Shout out to Golden Globes was yesterday. What the fuck are you talking about? 
Yeah, I, I, I saw I saw a buddy of mine. I saw a buddy of mine pissed that Oppenheimer Super took home Mario. so much shit. Well, Barbie Barbie won for something, and my buddy was like livid that Super Mario Brothers didn't win, and Barbie won, and he went on this whole tirade about Barbie like the like movie a blockbuster smash. What do you it was great. I liked it. It was a stupid movie. I enjoyed watching if it. If it's entertaining, despite like the super feminist stuff, like yeah, I get thought over it. Looked, it. It's I thought it looked hilarious. I thought it looked yeah. hilarious in the previews, so I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to watching it at some point. And I think that's the major problem with this. People see it as the ultra feminist film and they completely dismiss it. I mean, give it, take it for what it is and enjoy some of the fun moments and just don't judge yeah. it and be like, oh, Brody. there's feminist stuff in it. Brody, next week we're doing A Quiet Place. Yeah. Shh, shh, shh. <clears throat> So I think I need you whispering the whole when you well, th- send in your vid. You got to be whispering. I think one of the things I'm most excited for we got the first stills from the Nosferatu with William Dafoe. Yes, yeah. Yes. I, I I hope that's good. I really do. Well, if you've watched what's that uh, movie, Chad, that he did with? Uh, fuck, he did. It's like a behind the scenes of him of William Dafoe playing the vampire Shadow, oh, Shadow of Vampire. Yes, yeah. it's cool to see. Defoe into like the hunter aspect of that story instead of comparing him to Kinski and the vampire, it's gonna be interesting. Well, the photo they showed of him, I'm like, oh, he it looks so good. Yeah, he looks he's got his hands up and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm like, he looks like he's crazy. All right, we're in. I'm in. <laughs> Did anybody watch that movie Inside with Defoe? No, I still haven't mm-hmm. seen that yet. I want to though. That uh, art thief that gets stuck inside of a millionaire's house while he's on vacation. Yeah, no, I think I might have watched it by accident. Sorry. No. <laughs> it's oh. super cool. Here's one for nerd news. Uh, hey, uh, look at that. But uh, Her baby, <laughs> cute is she? Look at that. She's so, so look. She's so happy. happy. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Weird Al Yankovic won the Emmy last night for most outstanding television film for yes. Weird. Hell yeah! Yes. So, oh, no shit. Love that movie. I know. I saw the physical the other day. I was almost going to pick it up. I need to go back and get it. Did anybody see Paul the picture of Paul Giamatti with his Golden Globe at In and Out Burger? Oh, yes. In and Out that was fucking <laughs> epic. That was great. No, is no, no one going like, to is no one going to mention the fact that Deadpool accepted Ryan Reynolds' Golden? Oh yeah, he did. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Wait until Deadpool three. I think it's going to be the. If it doesn't win an Oscar, I'll be sad. Dude, is Deadpool 3 literally the only superhero movie coming out this year? It's the only one. It's the only like, MCU dude. one, but I don't think DC's got anything coming out. Yeah, but it's the only one that wasn't phased by the writers. But even strike. if it is, even if it is, I'm okay with that. It's because fine. Right now, and the question is, where the fuck is MCU going, though? The like Kang's in jail. What the well, fuck? he's not. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. People have been reporting that he was found guilty of whatever charges. He was, in fact, not found guilty of that shit. It's not going to be Kang, though, going forward. No, no, no. He's not. He's not. He's not. But uh, all these reports coming out about how he was found guilty on on the charges of assault, this and that, they're complete fucking bullshit. They fucking jumped the gun. I say they take Cat Williams and replace Jonathan Torres as Kang, and it's Kang... Kang, uh, a conqueror named it's Kang. Kang, Kang, bro. Kang. I would accept that version so hard and fast. It would be no, 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 no. I still like the meme. Are we getting... I still like the meme with Robert Downey Jr.'s Cat character Williams from as fucking... Kang the Conqueror. Let's make it happen. It's either that or Let's... bring back what's his name from Iron Man One. Who that's what yes, that's yes. Yeah. Do a multiverse slip and just be like, Bobby no, just like Iron Man One's continuity yes, now, bitches. <laughs> See, and Brody's bringing up Boys Season 4. So, did you guys ever read the Boys comic books? I did not. No. Before the series even I'm came out? I'm a DC out? guy, so I'm excluded from this. <laughs> okay. So, that's actually... The Boys is actually, like, really serious. It's kind of like... A solid comic book from what I've read. Oh, it's it's yeah. taking... uh, What? Like, all those, like... You know, the night, the night nurses, Daredevil, like Dark Side, the Dark Knight stuff, uh, freaking the Watchmen, and taking that and just putting it into a bucket and just mixing it around and just being like, "Hey, man, what if superheroes were not good guys? Yep. What if 100%. they could be bad guys?" And like, you just shake them up and like. I oh. always say Homelander is the best knockoff of Ultraman from uh, I, Superman Earth Three. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. 
see, now we're going sci-fi and we're not talking horror or this movie. <laughs> yeah, but that's this is nerd news. Nerd news. It's a, nerd yeah. nerd so this is an uh, open forum at this point. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. It was, uh, I know I saw some shit. Oh. Disgusting. Homelander oh. is just him. That's all Homelander yep. is. It's just this guy. Yep. <laughs> and so I basically, have a... so basically he's injustice Superman. Yes. Yeah. That Earth there three we... Earth three is a son of a bitch. It even has James Wood as Owl Man. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Injustice Superman at least had like a legitimate reason to fucking tweak out. <laughs> what? I'm powerful. Homelander's just bad shit so. crazy. <laughs> no, you remember? Because, like, remember Joker drugged him and then he ended up killing Oh, Lord? well, that's injustice. I'm talking about Earth 3 Superman. Oh, yeah. He's just yeah, yeah. Earth, he's just, <laughs> Earth 3, is, he's just born bad. Yeah. Was that? That's not the Russian one, right? No, that's, no, that's Red Sun. Yeah. Red Sun, that's right. Okay. Um, what the hell? He's I born. He's a... not necessarily born bad. He's told. He's. It's. He's just brain drawn that way. And then when he realizes everything's <laughs> fucked, he turns yeah, on yeah, it. I understand that reference. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you, thank you. I got it. Uh, oh, you know what? So in next week, actually, a few more days, we got a new horror movie coming out following the grain of holiday horror. And it's going to be called, it's called Founders Day. Mm -hmm. I don't know how well it's going to be, but you know what? If it follows the vein of Thanksgiving, I'm all fucking for it. That was a solid one, so. The physical release for that's just around the corner, too. Thanksgiving, I think, drops at the end of the month, if I'm not mistaken. You know what's sad, though, is I was looking for, I was looking into the physical release of Minus One, and there is. There's the, nothing. The only potential speculation is the end of 2024. And I'm I, like, think, I think it's going to be summer. I think it'll be summer. I think we're looking at yeah. maybe July or August release. You think they'll give us the black and white cut on there at the same time? I don't think. I hope so. At the very, just put your TV in black and white. Fine, fine. fine. At the very, Turn the I would say at the down. very latest we'll get it in November though, because for the seventieth anniversary. But I think it's going to be way ahead of that. One can only hope. All righty, boys. Anything else uh, nerdy that we want to discuss, or shall we? Is that about it? Let's wrap it up. All right, let's wrap, yeah, let's wrap it before we tap it. Gene should have done that after prom. Oh. <laughs> Life lessons from Scoobs. <laughs> now where'd Bobby go? He's back. There he is. There hey, we he's go. Back. Gene, thank you once again for uh joining with think? us today. Hey, thank you for having me. Like, this is one of my all-time favorite movies. Hell I yeah. Mean, I know everyone has different opinions on it. This is a fun movie to watch with your kids. I love this film. So <laughs> I mean, and I love all horror films. Fair enough. This Charlie. Is like, this is <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> What's that? What's Charlie's that? just babbling. He's just babbling up there. <laughs> He's Charlie. My daughter. <laughs> <the baby. laughs> All right. So she's, she's giving me the Mexican props. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Hispanic props. Or she's ours Mexican better than I. She's Mexican and Mexican Persian. And Persian. She's, yeah, I was gonna say. She's a Persian. <laughs> oh man, she doesn't even know what she is. <laughs> but no, I I love you guys having me on. Watch this show constantly. Great show. Why the fuck does this say I'm Fluff Master? <laughs> <laughs> you probably never changed your name when you came in. Where's, 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 where's Orgasmo when you need it? Yeah. <laughs> Stunt cop. Oh, speaking of Orgasmo, if anybody, uh, Fanflix, <laughs> Fanflix right now is having a sale on their digital movies, and Orgasmo is on there for five bucks. Sweet. As Sweet. is Basketball. Wait, there Orgasmo, oh, the, the, uh, the Matt, what is it? Yeah, Matt, Trey Parker, Trey Parker Master. Or the Jello yeah. that I have. Hold on. Uh, There's a Jello <laughs> called Orgasmo? There's a Jello oh, called God. Orgasmo. I swear to God, it's right here. <laughs> Look at it. Orgasmo. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> That's that is false. I bet you. I bet you. I will. I, you know. I'd prefer. Hold on. The, it's in the stack. Look at this. Well, so I do a bed. Hey, whoa. <laughs> oh, look at those legs. What year was that? Hold on. <laughs> Sixty-nine. <laughs> Damn. Hey, nice. Whoa. Hey. Nice. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Oh, that's boy. the Carol Baker. Ed, that's the. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the Leslie Baker Jello collection. 
Wow, there's an actual <laughs> original orgasmo. Orgasmo, like... the original orgasmo, everybody. So should we say the the one Does that we all Sancho? like? Is, is it what? <laughs> yeah, it's a Does it have Sancho? Sancho, Sancho. I am Sancho. I am Sancho. <laughs> all right, so I got one more thing, and then like, thank you for having me on. Watch <laughs> Cannibal the Musical. Tonight. Oh hell yeah, dude! Oh, After yeah. the orgasmo thing. <laughs> not the Jallo. <laughs> no. no. Although you know what, that might be one where I'd be like, you know what, let's watch this. Orgasmo <laughs> double feature. Would you watch it? What's orgasmo? Watch orgasmo <laughs> followed up by more orgasmo. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Gene, once again for joining yeah, us. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Yes, yeah, he texted no me at like two o'clock this afternoon. He's like, "Hey, can I be on the show tonight?" Fuck yeah, dude. I lost you guys, but I don't see a problem. Oh, yeah. I love this. I love this film. Sorry. Awesome. Good Boss man, thank you for popping in, home. We haven't Yay! seen you. Lovely face. Like, you know what? I'm going to say hi to the boys. It's been a minute. It has. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he shout met- out to all the listeners out there in Project Louder. Thank you guys Woo! for tuning in to Gore and More. Fucking right. He messaged me right as we're starting. He's like, so what are you up to tonight, buddy? I'm like, podcast? Oh, it's Monday. Like, <laughs> 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 Same shit we do every Monday. Uh-oh. We're like picking the brain. Brainy. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing on Monday? The same thing we do every Monday. <laughs> That's right. Take a Try to review a movie. <laughs> Mr. Amone. This is your killing machine, Bobby Amone, saying we'll see you next week for A Quiet Place. Scuba. This is your host with the ghost, the Prince of Paranormal, the Duke of the Dead, the ghost daddy himself, Lord Scuba Cabra, saying, Shh, I'll see you next week. Yeah, Jedi. buddy. This is your dark little of knowledge, your Chad Daddy way down yonder in the Chattahoochee saying, See you next week, bitches. And this is your not so mean fluff master supreme saying thank you once again, Gorehounds, for joining us for another fantastic episode. Thank you, Charlie. Also, yeah, Charlie <laughs> wrapping it up gonna, for us. Fucking hey, dude. <laughs> She's like, Enough of this shit. Get it on. <laughs> but uh, yes, join us next week for A Quiet Place. And uh, oh, yeah. Stay fresh, cheese bags. Grab some. Zombie cowboy penis. Thank you.